This is my desktop. I love this desktop. Out of all the operating systems I use, this is my favorite setup, and that's why you see me in it all the time as of a uh, recent, as I'm still making it. But for today, I want to show you how to get this. And if you're wondering, what is this? Let's just do a little NeoFetch here and see what we're running. And it's just Debian. The one, the true, the only Debian. This is what most Linux distributions are based off of. It is an amazing desktop. So let's get over here and start building this desktop. Uh, I'm going to use a virtual machine for this today. So we're just going to come on into here and we're going to build it out. You can use this on a regular hardware. You can use it in a virtual machine. Pick your poison. I'm just going to do a local install and the ISO that you need to download and use this will be right here on this page. Uh, you can easily come into Debian Titus, uh, and then I have a little link. Debian's not known for being very user-friendly downloading an ISO, but this one right here, if you just click this link, it'll take you to here. And you just want to grab the firmware testing AMD64 ISO. This will be updated, as you see, as of the making of this video. This was only three days ago that this was updated. And they, they continually roll these out because... I like to be more on the bleeding edge. You know how a lot of Linux users love Arch? Uh, a lot of Debian users love Debian because it's so stable. This is kind of like a good in-between ground. We get a lot of newer packages. Uh, probably the sacrifices of a little stability, but I still consider this far more stable than an Arch system. And we get all the benefits, which is why I, I chose this. And you just click this, download it. I already have it here. And we'll just come right back into here and we'll go to our uh, images directory. So we're gonna select that ISO we just did. And if you're not familiar with QEMU, you could use VirtualBox for this. Any, anything works just fine. I love this section. So we're just gonna go Debian testing and forward uh, CPUs. I'm just gonna give it about half of my resources, 10 gigs for the memory. And it does not need, need much. Like this is a pretty minimal install. 20 gigs is actually far more than this, this operating system needs. So we're just gonna go finish and finish as well. And I like to do just a regular install. As I said, this is more of an advanced install. And I personally have so much experience with the server version of Linux that I don't like a lot of the graphic elements because it uh, typically introduces some un unknowns. So I always use regular install here, uh, but you could use graphic install. It just looks a little different. And I'm just gonna flip through, choose my language and everything. And I'm just gonna call this Debian testing, but you name whatever you want. Domain name blank, root password. I don't ever like to set a root password. This disables the root uh, account by default. This is a good security measure. Uh, some people like to log in as root or run as root. And that's always, uh, I don't ever recommend that. So we're gonna just say Titus for this and just choose a simple password and central time. I'm gonna use the entire disk that we've allocated for it and put it all in one partition. Finish and write out. Uh, you can choose a, a different partition scheme if you like, but I always find that it's easier just to allocate a disk for whatever system you're doing. So if you're dual booting on this, I would have a disk for Linux and then I'd have a separate disk for Windows. And we're just gonna say no, we don't wanna install any extra media and then just finish this setup. I'm actually changing the server from the official Debian.org to GA Tech. That's actually closer to me and I know it runs just a little bit faster. But for most people, you probably wanna go ahead and just stay on the Debian mirror. Now, here's our first option. Uh, we don't wanna run any desktop environment. One thing I forgot to mention at the start was I don't use a desktop environment. I just manually configure everything as, uh, <laughs> as it's a server. Uh, this gives me the most reliable system and it also gives me the most minimal desktop. The downside to this is configuring certain things can be a little tricky if you're not real familiar with the terminal. But honestly, I think it's a good way to learn the inner workings of Linux, especially around the command line. All right, so here we go. This is just saying, do we want to install the bootloader on here? And we want to say yes to this and just select your drive that you're using. And installation is complete. So we can go ahead and reboot. So now we have just a basic server one here. What I like to do, just a sudo apt update, uh, update it, everything's up to date, which is pretty cool. 
Uh, next up is to kind of do a git clone. So we'll do a sudo apt install git. And we're just gonna say yes to that. So right here we have uh, the official git repository of all my settings. Now what I've done with this is if we look, we have all these different configuration files. This is actually a pretty minimal repository with very little things. We've already installed it. And basically we run this as root. We just switch to root user, run this. This sets up the base environment. And then we do some theming and other things. Now some of this is gonna be manual, so pay close attention when we get to the user portion as we will need to change some things, otherwise it's not gonna look right. So we'll do a git clone, and then we just put this address in. So very easy. This will clone that, and we'll just do a listing, change our directory, cd change directory to Debian Titus, and then we do a sudo su to switch it to root, and then we just do root.sh. Now what this does in the background is it changes it from the testing branch down to the SID branch, which is really good. It also goes ahead and does some other things, such as installing dependency packages and other things that we need for this uh, desktop environment. But this isn't really a full desktop environment, so it's not really installing that much stuff. All right, so now the root is done. Now, after we've done our sudo su, you can see we're the root user because of the, the hash sign we see right here. And we can just go ahead and hit exit, do another listing, and you can see now we can run this as user. So we just go user, and then we run that. It's like, hey, we need to install these certain packages. So we'll say and, and hit yes to this. Now, most of everything here is just some special fonts, also uh, just, just some aesthetics. So there's not really anything from a system package point of view here. The couple external downloads it's doing there is actually the nerd fonts uh, Meslio and also uh, Firecode. And this is just grabbing some Windows-based fonts as well. This just makes it a little easier when you get into uh, certain like Word documents and things from those Windows users that send you stuff. Now I did run into a couple errors here that I'm going to go ahead and straighten out before uh, the, let's say you're running this. Always be paying attention whenever you're running a script. If there's any errors, we need to fix those errors. So just to verify everything, we should see xnord and xresources. Those were added. And then if we go into .config, we should see uh, BSP, Kitty, all these things right here we're going to use when we go ahead and log in. And then finally, to kind of piece all this together, is what login manager are we using? Now, you don't necessarily need to use like what's called a display manager like SDDM or LightDM. Don't worry if you don't understand that. Just know those are, are basically login managers. Uh, and if we just do like a system CTL status SDDM, I think is what I was using. It's actually not being used at all here. So we can actually just do a system CTL start SDDM and, and that will just log, log into it. But if we wanna do this on startup, we can actually just do an enable SDDM. And I think we can just do dash dash now. Um, and we, we're actually not as root. So let's just do this as root. And there we go. So now we have a login screen. We can make this a little prettier though. And we'll log in. And now we have this beautiful uh, desktop, uh, much like what you see over here, just a little bit blown up. It's mainly because if we do our, we look at this, we're running at 1024 by 768. Setting the resolution here can be a little tricky, uh, but if you want a, a tool to set this, let's say you don't want to do it through X11, I like to hard code this. So you could easily do what's called a, a X11 comp file. I'll, I'll link to a video where I show how to hard code this so you never have to set anything. But for most people, you're not going to want to do this. So you probably want a tool called a Randar. I've used this a couple times. I don't particularly like the GUI aspect of it, but some folks out there probably will. So let's just go a Randar. Set that, and we'll just set this resolution to uh, 1080p. Sounds good to me. That looks great. Now you'll notice our top bar is not there. Now there's certain hotkeys that you need to know about in this system. Uh, so the easiest way is just to cat your .conf, and there's something called SKHKD. This is all your, your hotkeys. And if you look through here, you can set 
all these different things to different hotkeys. So let's say you want to go to Workspace 2, you hold your mod key, which is the Windows key or your super mod key, whatever you, you label it. Most people know it as the Windows key though. And you can switch between all the desktops. And there's a whole bunch of different hotkeys in here. I just wanted to show this uh, first. So let's go ahead and just do a reboot and see what our startup looks like. So we've logged back in. However, our screen is still not setting to the right resolution. How do we keep that resolution? Do a Randar and do our resolution like we did. Check that out. And then we can like save this actually to a screen layout. Let's just call it def and save that shell script. But we'll just go into our dot profile. And then at the end here, usually you might just go ahead and set a, a run path. So let's just do a home dot screen layout def dot sh and actually let's run that from bash so we'll just go bash and then that makes sure it runs it in, in a bash prompt uh, so let's give this another reboot and see what we get uh, maybe a pseudo reboot here and there we go now that looks a lot better now some things in the startup aren't right so i already showed you where all the hotkeys are now, just to kind of set you to where you would actually configure some of the tiling window management. Uh, again, in that config directory under BSPWM, this is basically where most of everything resides. So let's go ahead, take a look at this and clean up some stuff. So this first part is basically just setting up the monitor and some of the icons and, and cleaning things up for us, which is all fine and good. But certain things that you probably may not want, like Discord here, you probably don't care about Discord, so you might wanna remove these six lines uh, and just kind of get rid of uh, Discord. And it doesn't need to switch that desktop. That'll make this run a little bit faster. Uh, you don't need to mount drives. I have this script to actually mount some of my drives. Uh, you're probably not gonna use Synergy. I have like a bunch of different computers set up, my production machine and this one. So Synergy, I use one keyboard and mouse to control like three different uh, systems which you won't need. Now, PyCom here, that's what uses, uh, gives translucent effects. It's actually not working. So let's take a look at PyCom and see what's going on with it. And it says, hey, there's an error in unable to initialize the back end for the vsync method. Uh, and if we look at the line there, we're like, okay, let's see what we can do for pycom.conf. It's unable to do that. So maybe we just do false see if that works ah much better okay <laughs> a little bit of troubleshooting there if you run into something look at what it's happening maybe because i'm running in a virtual machine it's not able to use vsync which is fine so now we have some translucent effects and you can kind of see what that looks like compared to the default uh, now we need to set our background so we already fixed our pycom there uh, variety that's what I was using for it um, or actually you know what let's just use variety instead of Faye. Uh, that's another background uh, tool and most people like that a little bit better than manually setting it I personally like to kind of hard code a specific JPEG to it or maybe uh, control it a little bit better but variety is what most people will probably like and now let's run that variety program and we're gonna customize some of this first off um, let's change our look. You see how, uh, some of our, uh, things are all just like, ah, I'm blind. <laughs> let's fix some of our appearance real fast. Uh, we'll just do this. And I think we already have Nordic. That's my favorite. It gives kind of a nice little aesthetic, uh, icon theme. I like to use, uh, papyrus, uh, usually like a dark or a light. Uh, we'll use that. Apply that mouse cursors. I like, uh, ooh, let's go white on this one. Apply, you can change these out, obviously. Pick your poison. And that should give us a little bit better look and feel, a little bit better mouse cursor, all that business. Back to making our desktop better. And we're gonna just look at this, change it on startup. You can change what wallpapers you want. Uh, you know, honestly, <laughs> this is kind of funny. Maybe this is the Windows user in me uh, speaking out loud, but I really like just choosing Bing because they, they usually have some really cool ones. And let's stay with the Christmas theme and just do that one right there. And boom, 
And then every five minutes, or if you want to just do it once a day, it could switch between all your, your daily Bing uh, background images. So this kind of gives you a little more theming. You have some of that nice transparency effects. This will get you at least started with this. Again, this is not really meant for a beginner. It's really meant for someone that wants to elevate their, their, their Linux game, so to speak, learn a little bit more about how to do it. But the thing I love about this is, is at such a low level that we don't have anything that really can go wrong because there's not much packages installed. If let's just do a first as NeoFetch and you'll see, we don't even have a thousand packages installed. I don't know of any Debian based install with a desktop environment that has less than a thousand packages. I think even like Lubuntu and some of the really lightweight ones still have well over a thousand packages installed. This gives you the opportunity to install just the absolute bare necessities to get this thing working, which is great. Uh, start menus over here, uh, power menus over here. Uh, actually, it didn't show up. I'll work on getting this going. I wanted to kind of give an idea of how I make my desktop environment. It's still a very rough draft, and this is probably going to take a good several months to maybe even a year before this is probably ready for a little bit more mainstream or even a, a more of an intermediate user, I'd say. If you don't know a lot about Linux, you're going to have a lot of struggles on this desktop. Now, before you go, there's something I wanted to show you. This right here. There is only one Debian. I made shirts specifically for this, and I'm gonna take 50% of all the profits of these shirts and donate it directly to the Debian Foundation as it is by far, I think, the most influential desktop environment out there for uh, Linux. If you're looking for a distribution, in Linux, whether it's elementary, Ubuntu, uh, you name it, a lot of it is based on Debian. And uh, that's why I love Debian, because it is pretty much the, the granddaddy or the father to so many modern uh, Linux distributions that you know of. Pop OS based on Ubuntu, which is based on Debian. <laughs> so uh, if you want to contribute, by all means, uh, click down in the description for this shirt or uh, yeah, let me know. And it, I, if you don't want to do that, you want to just directly donate to the Debian Foundation, go to their website, uh, debian.org and, and directly donate to Debian. But with all that, let me know your thoughts on this setup. I know it's meant for more of a expert type user, but I wanted to at least show people how I set up my desktop. So maybe you could take this, do something with it, have at least some fun for those that are real familiar. If not, hang tight, give me a couple of months and I'm gonna make this a lot easier. But for today, for the holidays, I at least wanted to show the, the very beginning, the, the first draft really, if you will, for those out there. But let me know how I did down in the comments section and I'll see you in the next one.